Hi everyone, welcome to the Simply Learns YouTube channel. In this tutorial, we will learn about a brief introduction to agentic AI and AI agents. Also, we will try to build an AI agent of our own to have a good hands-on experience. An AI agent can revolutionize how businesses and individuals handle daily tasks. In cold calling, it can automatically reach out to leads, follow a script, answer basic questions, and qualify prospects, saving hours of manual effort. As a professional assistant, it can check your calendar, schedule meetings, and even reschedule medical visits or appointments in real time. In HR, an AI can handle initial candidate screening, answer frequently asked questions about company policies, and also schedule interviews. For personal use, it can pick up your cell calls, screen spam calls, and even respond on your behalf with smart, context-aware replies. These AI agents work 24-7, don't get tired, and can scale with your businesses. Today, we will learn about these AI agents in our tutorial. That's it. If these are the type of videos you'd like to watch, then hit that like and subscribe buttons and the bell icon to get notified. Also, just that you know, if you want to upskill yourself, master generative AI and artificial intelligence skills and land in your dream job or grow in your career, then you must explore Simply Learn's code of various generative AI courses and certifications. Simply Learn offers various certification programs in collaboration with some of the world's leading universities like Purdue, IIT Guwahati and many more. Through our courses, you will gain knowledge and work-ready expertise in skills like advanced Python, machine learning, generative AI, and over a dozen others. That's not all. You also get the opportunity to work on multiple projects and learn from industry experts working in top-tier data and product companies along with the academics from top universities. After completing these courses, thousands of learners have transitioned into an AI and machine learning role as a fresher or moved on to a higher-paying job and profile. If you are passionate about making your career in this field, then make sure to check out the link in the pinned comment and description box below to find a generative AI program that fits your experience and areas of interest. Now, without further delay, let's get started with the agenda for today's session. First, we will understand the rise of AI, followed by that, a quick startup hustle on the AI industry, then what's under the hood of an AI agent, and some ways to build the AI agents, and lastly, we will have a small example use case and followed by that we will have a demonstration on that i hope i made myself clear with the agenda now let's get started with a quick question when was the last time you interacted with an ai agent without even realizing it maybe while chatting with customer support or when spotify magically created a playlist that felt like it knew your mood well here's the thing ai isn't just creeping into our lives it's taking over industries faster than any other technology in the last two decades. In fact, companies big and small are using AI not just as a tool, but as a full-fledged workforce multiplier. And what's leading this revolution is the AI agents. By the end of this session, you will not only understand what AI agents are, but you'll also even know how they work, how companies, even tiny teams, are building game-changing products and how you can create one even without coding. Now, let's proceed with our first topic, which is about the rise of AI. AI is no longer a future concept. It's the mainstream and it's exploding. From automating customer support to helping write code and generate artwork, AI is the backbone of modern startups. And the most exciting part, you don't need hundreds of employees or millions in funding to help build something impactful. Now, with that said, the startup hustle is our next topic. Let's talk about a few real-time examples. These companies started small, often with fewer than 20 people, and used AI to build applications and scale them globally. The companies are Midjourney, Lovable, Cursor, and Bold for examples. Let's begin with the first one, which is Midjourney. Midjourney a text-to-image generative AI tool. Team size, fewer than 50. Estimated ARR, over $200 million annually. Midjourney changed how designers, creators, and marketers visualize ideas by turning simple prompts into stunning art. The next one on the list is Cursor AI. An AI-first code editor designed to write 
code alongside you team about 10 to 12 people their error roughly five to seven million dollars and growing rapidly they built a developer tool that automates code suggestions testing and even debugging the next one on our list is lovable Lovable is an AI-powered website builder. Their tool allows non-technical users to spin up professional-grade websites just in minutes. Small team under 10 people with revenue crossing $1 to $2 million ARR within their first year. And the next one on the list is Bold.me, a cutting-edge AI coding assistant and developer platform. Again, a lean team, roughly 15 members and a fast scaling ARR with nearly three to five million dollars and their edge, they help developers to ship products five times faster. Now, think about this. Do you see a pattern here? It's not about the size of the team anymore. It's about the power of AI driven automation and AI agents. So what exactly they are made of? What's under the hood of an AI agent is our next topic. Here's where we break it down. At its core, an AI agent is like a virtual employee. It has two major building blocks. First one, the brain, and second one, the hands or the tools. Let's break down the brain part. Brain is the LLM or the large language model. Think of GPT, Claude, Perplexity, DeepSeek, Grog, Gemini. This is the agent's thinking component. It understands instructions, reasons, and makes decisions. On the other hand, we have the tools. These are the actual interfaces it uses to get things done. Tools like Gmail, Messenger, Google Calendar, search engines, and even forms. The LLM tells it what to do, but these tools let it actually do it. Like sending emails, scheduling meetings, or searching for information. With that discussed, let's have a small quiz around here. Let's imagine, you are building an AI agent to automatically respond to your customer inquiries by pulling data from your CRM and drafting emails. Which combination below is the best representation of the brain and the hands of your AI agent? Following are your options. GPD as the brain plus Zapier to connect Gmail and CRM. Playwright as the brain plus Gmail as the hands. Zapier as the brain plus GPT as the hand. And lastly, Puppeteer as the brain plus Langchain as the hand. Please let us know your answer in the comment section below. Now with that, let's dive into our next topic, which is about the two different ways of building an AI agent. Now, the million dollar question is, how do you actually create one? There are two different parts. And the good news is, you don't have to be a hard code coder if you don't want to. So let's proceed with the ways. First one, the coding route for developers who are very good and comfortable with coding. To build from scratch, you need some basic tools and frameworks. For example, Langchain, JSON, Puppeteer, Python, etc. Langchain is the framework for connecting LLMs with tools and APIs. JSON, the structure inputs and outputs to your agent, which can talk properly. Puppeteer and Playwright to automate browser actions like scraping or filling forms. And lastly, JavaScript or Python programming languages, the core programming to tie it all together. This approach gives you full control, but requires some technical chops. The option two, the no code route. Not a coder, no problem. Today, you can create powerful AI agents with drag and drop platforms like Make, through AI, Zapier, and N8N. These tools let you connect services like Gmail, Google Forms, Slack, or databases, and your AI agent can operate without a single line of code. Now, let's look at a small use case or an example, the HR assistant agent. Let's make this real. Imagine you are an HR manager. Every week you get hundreds of job applications through Google Forms. Instead of manually checking each one, you build an AI agent that reads new form entries, check your calendar for availability, drafts, or sends out email to the applicants. Now, there are two ways you can make it work. A fully automated version where agent sends out emails directly without your involvement. And the second one, human in the loop. 
you can have an option there. The AI agent will draft the email, but you get to review and approve them before they get sent. Which one would you trust more for your company right now? Full automation or human in the loop? Think about it and you might want the agent to start small, then move to the full automation once tested. Let us know your answers in the comment section below. Now, let's proceed to the small demonstration. In a moment, we will walk you through a quick demo of creating a simple AI agent, connecting a Google form to Gmail via Zapier or any pen, so application get personalized email response automatically. This is the exact kind of automation small teams use to save several hours of work. Now, we will be proceeding with the Zapier application for this one. So I've already created a Google form, which is HR AI agent. We'll have a few inputs like name, phone number, email, job role that they have applied for, etc. And here we will be recording the responses and a few settings to make if you want to personalize a few things. Like here, you can go in and check for allow response editing or get verified email addresses only. Send a copy of this form to the responded people or if they prefer, right, a few things. And here you can just quickly sign up for free or log in if you have an account. I already have an account, so I'll just quickly log in. So I have now logged into my account for Zapier. Remember, this is free. And here you already have a couple of uh, free templates for your use to get started with. So uh, Facebook and Google Sheets, if you're performing a marketing campaign on any of the social media platforms, you can also do that. And uh, you can just quickly click on Browse Old Templates. So you have a full available library of available uh, templates on Zapier. So if you see here, you can have uh, social media things connected to your Google Sheets to record the data and all those things. And also, if you scroll a little bit down, here you can find the one you're looking for, Google Forms with Gmail. So click on that and you should be having a quick version of that. You can just click on try it to get started. It is automatically getting started to build your workflow template for you. All you need to do is just make some modifications to it. So check your questions once again, copy the link, keep it on the clipboard if you need it. So here you can see that it's not uh, customized yet. So click on that and please choose an account. You can choose the account which is related to this particular ID, login ID. And here you can see a few more things. So uh, not the, yeah, you have uh, two different varieties here, new form or uh, any updated response. So you can go ahead with any one of those. So once any update is added to this particular Google form, it will pick it up and send out an email. And now if you scroll down, you can change uh, the Google forms and continue. Now here we need to choose from which Google form. So you remember we created a new form, which is HR AI system. You just need to click on that to select that particular form and moving further, continue to test it. Once the test trigger is successful, you'll get a green tick mark or check mark over there. That's the one. So now you can proceed further to uh, configuring your Gmail. So here the action is to send out an email, which is by default selected and now go to the configuration window. Here you need to uh, select the email uh, address or the person who is receiving so on the google form we have mentioned a name for that so you just can type it down as uh, forward slash email so you get the entry there and uh, the next one would be responding email if you want to go with the safer side you can also select that or just in case if you want to have someone in the cc you can also choose that carbon copy or blind carbon copy now from which email address you want to send it out so i want to send it out from my email address that's the one and uh, from name you want to have a name of yours you can have it or you can also choose to customize so i have customized it as hr simply learn and reply to and everything all so reply to you can add the person's email address or the respondent email address there and proceeding further you have the subject there you can have a small uh, you know sensible subject saying acknowledgement from a simply learn hr department and the body should be hi recipient. So here we will be choosing the name. So for that, you'll have a shortcut, which is hi space forward slash name and select the entry, which is down there. And now comma and uh, the quick body. Thanks for applying for simply learn or thanks for applying for a designated role. Uh, you can also extract the role from the same approach forward slash and uh, role apply. If you scroll down, you can see that. Yeah, job role, just click on that. 
and your job role has been successfully inserted. Thanks for applying to XYZ job role, for example, data analyst here with Simply Learn. And the routine, we will take a look through your profile or application and get back to you the shortest or the earliest. And the closing lines would be thanks and regards from Simply Learn. So we are done so far, so good. Everything looks fine. We can just continue and test it. So if I test it, let me check the body. Okay, it's not extracting the two data. Not a problem. Let's find out what's the problem and fix it. For now, if you want, you can just directly test the step or you can try to fix the Google form once and get back to here later. Let's try to test. It should give us an error. Okay, invalid header. So it must be either we don't have any data entry here or it must be another reason where the email data type is not being accepted as an email properly. Anyways, let's try to write an entry first. I'll log in from a different uh, email address and try to enter my name and all the other details quickly. I'll submit. Now send me a copy. I'll press on submit. Okay, uh, record this as the email. That's the one and now submit. Let's see if we have uh, received the response or not in the Google Sheet. So if I check here in the responses, I've received one response. And if I link it to the Google Sheets, I should be having a separate Google Sheet for this. There you go, the first entry. Now let's go back to the Zap and test it. Retest step. But I can see the email address is not uh, extracted from the Google form. So this must be some error related to the data type in Google Form. So if I check the fix option here, it will give me suggestions. Yeah. So here you need to go to the options and select text and it should be an email, right? So if you make the settings, now the Google Form will, uh, you know, recognize any entry given as an official email address. And now Zapier or the Zap can extract the data or the text data entered as an email address and it should work. So let's go back to the zap or let me add another response, a fresh response. I can make a few modifications, maybe phone number. I'll keep the email address same as before. The job rule will be same. Send me a copy of my responses and submit. Two responses, great. Now continue test step or let me refresh my zap once there you go the message was sent to gmail about a second ago or zero minutes yeah that's my email thanks for applying to data and the stroll with simply learn zero minutes ago so sample text question answer i think i did not format the google form it's a small issue you just need to go back to your okay not this one yeah here you need to change a few settings for your name section and that should be resolved. And followed by that, if you see, Zapier also took the liberty to uh, have a custom message that this particular email is uh, the property of Simply Learn, right? That's a very uh, good step from Zapier. It's intelligent there. And you can now publish your Zap and it will be available on your account. Your Zap is now using version V1. You can go to my Zaps and you will have it. So that's how you build an HR AI assistant. And with that, we have come to an end of this session on AI Agents Explain Tutorial for Beginners. Should you need any assistance, PPT, or any other resources used in this session, then please feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be happy to assist you at the earliest. Until next time, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.